Holoforms is this chance to take older units and update them with all the newest and greatest skills, and no unit needs that more than Ryoma. Let's talk about the reasons to pick this unit up. We'll go over some sims and builds, and we'll talk about what's coming on the forefront for Holoforms. Melee Flyers have a ton of new toys they can use, and it really takes Ryoma from very bad to pretty usable. Because of guidance and soaring guidance, you get excellent support out of this unit in Arena, and you can actually use him in some other modes. He can do some damage. Let's go over what we're starting with, and this is an early refine, and you can tell because how small the text is. The newer ones cover the entire page, and sometimes I have to drop the font down. That was not the case here. Regento is just not as good as Arcane Devourer. Period. You'll still have to use it because arena scoring. If you're in any other mode though, and if this is your favorite, Arcane Devourer is the weapon to go with. Bushido 2 is not that great, honestly. There are some better options and we'll go into those. Just remember, at that time, this was an absolutely busted refine and 39 speed was really fast. Oh, memories. Just to review exactly what these do, Regento has Distant Counter 4 and Omni Plus 4 in combat and no follow-up. Bushido 2 has Iot's Shield and Dodge. I wanted to start off with some max invest builds and team ideas for what you would do with this unit. And the first is an Omni Tank build. And I've been playing a lot with melee flyers as Omni Tanks and they actually hold up fairly well. There are definitely units that you'll have to worry about and we'll go over those in the Sims, but this can actually perform under the right circumstances. And I mean, we take the standard Peony, Milla and Asker. He really needs Camilla though in AR. Uh, no kidding, piercing is so important in the meta right now. I tried this unit with no quarter. I, I really like Gambit and Aether better when you're talking about an Omni tank, but attack speed prime four and speed defense rain snap work really well together. And we'll talk about how this unit sims. As far as arena goes, I mean, the problem is you have to use our dual flying four, and that is such a hindrance to older units. And it is such a score drop if you don't use it. And 756 is already borderline. If this is your old water legendary that you're really trying to keep up with, you just have to have the dual four. We're hoping that in the future, these dual skills become either something better or they figure out a different method in arena to do scoring. I think that last one's a bit of copium. Uh, the last build I wanna talk is this middle one here. This is fun and can actually do a lot of damage. If you're going on Abyssals or taking this on a journey through the story maps, this is a build that will do this unit justice. Burn damage is an absolutely fantastic way to upgrade your nuke and Flared Sparrow plus Assassin Strike gives you plenty of that along with Deadly Miasma, which is a good support for the rest of the team. Arcane Devourer, Ah, we talked about it just a second ago, but particularly on this build with no quarter and Marth support means that you are getting a no quarter probably on the second hit as long as you outspeed the opponent. Let's talk about some Sims and we've got AR offense first. We, so we already talked about the Gambit and attack speed prime build and all of the support you need for this unit. I'm assuming you've got an Omni plus six, which is pretty standard. You can normally get buffs pretty easily. And then I've got the other team, which is essentially a cav line. It's what we're looking at, and we've got the usual suspects with Cavacer and Note, and yes, that's a Frayer. No, that is not a typo. I am seeing this unit a lot in Dark Season because Frayer is just so good. Um, right off the bat, you see that this unit handles Sanaki, which is fantastic, but remember that Sanaki's big thing is that she needs you to have opponents around you and to not have debuff neutralization because we have Pe Peony and because the nature of Omni Tank Flyers normally is that they're all alone, Ryoma handles Sanaki fairly well. Same with Kvaser, keep in mind, have to have piercing. I ran this without piercing and the results were ugly. Now. He can't double Yunaka, and that's really where we start to see chinks in the armor. He doesn't have enough speed to beat the elite fast units. And as far as Leon goes, okay, so, I mean, the Sim says 10 and 50, and technically that is a, a, a draw, but I'll tell you right now, if your Omni Tank has 10 HP left, 
that is a loss. Uh, Leon is a problem across the board, and a lot of people are using something like Mila to break calf lines in order to kind of take apart and piecewise take on the calves. It's a very good idea if you can isolate Leon because in the player phase, he can be taken out fairly easily. So let's move on to player phase arena. And again, we have the Omni plus six, but no other bonuses on this unit. What I will say is this, the idea here is that Ryoma is a sniper. So he provides soaring guidance for the rest of the team and can come in and take out some of these water legendaries like Camilla that don't have real heavy defenses. But using aerial maneuvers can get in there, smack Camilla, and the rest of the team can have fun using that soaring guidance to really boost you up. But man, I mean, you've got the dual skill, you've got Regento that already has DC, and then to max score, you have to have DC. Like, that is so painful. Uh, DC in a weapon has become a hard thing for scoring units in general. But, I mean, look at this. He takes out Leon just fine. Um, Krom is a problem, and so is Cyril. I'm seeing Cyril everywhere. He's very common. He's a very good unit. And you actually need a lot of speed and a lot of power to get to him, and Ryoma doesn't get there. Um, I will say Sanaki and Ninjor who is still pretty common those two go down easily this unit is not going to be able to take on the bulkier armors that we're seeing now so the bylist it's going to be ugly and asker is still around still a very good unit and rioma doesn't really touch him all right so we get to the actual hall of form skills here that you can target i wish you could get arcane devourer i think that would be so much fun but they they haven't done that for us yet um we talked about the air offense build i do like ninja katana uh, i think that's a nice brave weapon that you can get uh, again you're probably going to want either an arcane weapon or just go with regento that's a possibility um sd rain snap is so much fun and provides a lot of support for your team if you have infantry units there uh, we talked about gambit four and aether i in this build i've left aether on there but understand you'll probably want to go for something like your ruptures guy or your no quarter just so you can get something that's rare um as far as the arena build goes and I normally don't talk about rallies. Just about any one is just as good as the other. I normally go for a rally up or a harsh command. Harsh command if I'm playing in summoner duels, rally up if I'm planning on this unit on defense, anything else, it's whatever I feel like. But attack speed unity is a great skill. Um, aerial maneuvers is a lot of fun. And we already talked about soaring guidance. If you have armors on your arena team, go for guidance instead of soaring guidance for obvious reasons. The last build here is the player phase. I just want a super new Krioma. So again, I've got the Ninja Katana there, but there's no quarter, Flared Sparrow, Assassin Strike, and Deadly Miasma, which is a fantastic combination on melee flyers right now in general, and it really works well on Ryoma. If you're asking what I'm going for, I'm going for the all-out player phase build. I will be using this unit as a bonus unit in Arena, so I'm trying to be able to get as many kills as possible. Just know that any of those skills is really good, and I like all three of those builds on this round. So just to touch on the water rankings, yes, this is still the worst water legendary, but Again, new skills really make a unit usable, and the ability to actually kill things at Arena is not small. The difference is most of these other units have some sort of use case, whereas you kind of have to manufacture it for Rioma. Last thing, here we have the upcoming Formas, and in March we have Sothis. This is going to be a fun one, and I, I love Sothis, so I'm really going to enjoy updating her. I actually think Fjorm in May has a lot of value you can give her. And being that she is a bonus unit every four cycles, she can contribute in Aether Raids. Now, we're all hoping for Hell over Harid because Hell would be a lot of fun to build up. But Harid does have some decent skills that he can get if that is the case as the second mythic or legendary. Now, November is the one you really want to watch. Believe it or not, Hector can benefit a ton from these new skills. I, I'm thinking near save with Armored Blaze. I've already run some sims with him, and I he really can contribute at that level. 
but we're all hoping for Ellawood because that unit is still very viable and a lot of fun. If you're interested in what's going on in the meta, I have a link to my latest meta report. Go check that out. Members, you are amazing. Thank you so much for your contributions, even though you changed my name to Sully Stan. Take care and schedule an appointment with your fail just real soon.